Hi guys, long time no see. It's been about a month. A lot of stuff's happened. I'm in the process of moving. We have college in a month. Holy crap. What is life? Um, a bunch of other stuff. I turned 18 this week. Uh, adulthood. Woo. But with that, with that taking the month off and just kind of just taking time for myself, um, I read a lot. So we're going to do my June and July wrap up. There's a lot of books. I'm not even sure how many books there are. But we're going to do it, so let's get into it. So the first book, and these aren't in any particular order, so I don't want, know why I'm saying first book. The first book I read is a reread, and it's Beautiful Bastard. Now, I had the second book, Beautiful Player, and I hadn't read The Beautiful Player yet, and it's been so long since I read Beautiful Bastard. I decided to reread this one, then read this one for the first time. And I and this one got four out of five stars. That's what I've always given it. But this one I didn't really enjoy as much, and I gave it three out of five stars. Then I also read the third book, which is not like an library ebook learn. And I've really been into those lately, so um, that one actually got 5 out of 5 stars. It's probably my favorite in the series. I know there's going to be more books in the series, but for right now, that's my favorite. Um, and that is called Beautiful... What is that called? Beautiful Player. Excuse the length of this. I am aware there's a lot of books. It's two months of wrap-up. And Beautiful Bastard and Beautiful uh, Stranger and Beautiful Player all follow different characters. Like It's kind of like... It takes place after, so it wouldn't be a like companion, because it takes place after. I don't know what those would be called, because it's not a series, it's not the same people. But, um, yeah, they're all about different things. I leave the Goodreads links down below to all books mentioned in these videos, so be, for, be sure to check out that and get a more in-depth thing of each book if you want. These next three books are books that I always read in, like, the June-July time, just because they're always fun to reread, and sometimes you just need them, and I can rip whip all three of these out in the same day. So, it is The Summer I Turned Pretty Trilogy by Jenny Han. This is The Summer I Turned Pretty. This is It's Not Summer Without You. And then this is We'll Always Have Summer, if you can read that. There we go. Um, these always get 5 out of 5 stars. I love these. Um, I am starting to find that the first one's a little too childish for me, but I still really enjoy it because, I mean, I've read these, like, for three summers straight, just rereading, and, like, if I'm in a bad mood, I'll just reread one of the books. Because, literally, I whip these out, all three of them, in the same day. And the Summer I Turned Pretty series is about a girl named Belly, and she's 15 when the series starts, and it's basically about her summers with, um, the Conrad and Jeremiah and her family and Beck and all of them and it's just her adventures and her life and growing up and all this stuff so it's a really good book series and it's fun to read in the summer because summer then I reread My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick and this follows a girl named Samantha and she like likes to look at the neighbors they have a lot of kids and um she ends up actually starting dating one of them named Jace and it's just their story and I like the, I don't know, I think, I, I feel like I've done a review of this, but I'm not sure. Um, but this is a reread for me, and I read it last summer, and I enjoyed it. So I want to reread it this summer. I don't know, I kind of like doing that in the summer. Because rereading is fun if you enjoyed the book the first time, and I don't know, I keep enjoying it. And I love... <laughs> that little boy and I'm not gonna be able to remember his name because I suck like that. The next book I read is Forever You by Allie Everhart and this is the fifth and final book in the Jade series and I gave it four out of five stars. I feel like I had trouble with it a little bit just because it was I feel like it wasn't even needed because I feel like it wrapped up well with the fourth book but it was still a really nice book and I really enjoyed it and um it's about this girl who goes to college on a scholarship and she starts dating this boy and then like there's mafia. I don't, it's hard to explain this series, um, but basically they get into trouble. Not like trouble, but you know, trouble and people and things happen and it's just a good series, especially like if you like minor suspense, minor mystery trying to figure out stuff, but yeah, it's really cool and I really enjoyed it, so four to five stars. Then I read Reflected in You, which is the, um, Buried to You book two and I gave it three out of five stars. I really didn't enjoy this series. It was more of I just need to finish it for my sanity, which brings me into the next book I read, which is Entwined With You, which I think I gave two out of five stars. And this one, I mean, I just hated everything about this one, but like it's part of me that I'm just like, I have to finish this. I have to. Like, Jesus, let me finish this. So thus, that happened, and it only got two out of five stars. Then I read The Guard by Kira Cass, which is the 2.5 in the Selection series, and it's between the Elite and the One, and I read it after I read the One, so it was kind of useless, but I still wanted to read it, and um, yeah, that was life. It wasn't 
I'm not good, I got three out of five stars, but everyone knows my feelings on Aspen, so that's why. I read All the Way by Jennifer Probst, and it's basically about this food critic who's a girl, and then this owner, chef, they used to date, and she gives the person a bad review because of that, because they ended badly, and their story of all this stuff, and you know, it seemed like a good book at the time, like when I started reading it, but as I got into it more, it like got three out of five stars, so I don't know what else to say about it, it just... It kept me, it was boring. That's the best way I could put it. It was boring. Then I read Out of Line by Jen McLaughlin, and this one got four to five stars. It is a reread for me. I actually really enjoyed it more this time, I think, because I read it a little bit more closely because I was rereading it so I can read Out of Time, which is the next book, which I hadn't gotten to yet, but, you know, I'll get to it eventually. Um, but I'm really intrigued to, like, continue the series, and I couldn't remember really much of it, but it's still... I don't know, really enjoyed it. And I believe it's about, like, football, obviously, out of line. I don't... I think... I don't even have words. Like I said, the Goodreads descriptions are, since this was, like, a month ago, it's kind of hard for me to remember everything. And I did read a lot of books. So that's why the Goodreads are down below, because I don't explain well. Then I read How My Summer Went Up in Flames. And this was a book that came out last year in the summertime. And it's basically about this girl, like, um... Her boyfriend breaks up with her and she accidentally sets her boyfriend's ex-boyfriend's car on fire. So her parents basically force her to go on this road trip. And on this road trip, it, it's a road trip. It's like a decent book and I gave it three out of five stars. Basically because I thought like the story wasn't developed well and like all you got to see was a cranky like person. And like I really don't like the main girl because she was just like complaining the entire time. So that's why I got three out of five stars for me. Then I read Rome, which is the third book in the Marked Men series. And the first book is uh, Roll, and the second one is Jet. This one is Rome. And this one got four to five stars. It's probably my favorite in the series, just because I didn't have any problems with it. The first two, I had a lot of problems, and they were kind of boring, and they just weren't good. But this one definitely got better, and I feel like the series is just gonna, like, exponentially, like, improve, because I think there's gonna be, like, six books. So, yay. And then alongside that, I read the next book, Nash, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars because, like, I freaking love this book. Like, Nash is, like, probably my favorite book of the series, and, like, I loved Saint, and basically, if you don't know what this is about, it's kind of like that spinoff thing. I guess, yeah, spinoff, that's the word I was looking for earlier. Um, and it's about this, like, group of friends, and, like, each one of them, like, slowly gets, like, together with someone, with something, and all that stuff happens, so that is life. Then I read Mine, which I said I wasn't going to do, which is a sequel to Real, if you didn't know that, and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars, and I don't know, I wasn't planning on re -re like reading the finish, like the rest of the series, because I said I was fine with the ending of that one, but someone told me it got better as the series went on, and this one wasn't really good, but you can I can tell you later that it does get better. And as I said, I read Re Remy Next, which is the third book, and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. This one I enjoyed a lot more, just because I feel like it wasn't so focused on the big kicker, and it was actually more like believable in a way. Not that the other ones weren't really, yeah, they kind of weren't, but this one just kind of had more real life issues in a way, and I enjoyed that more. So, I actually have the next one on hold on my library, so let's hope it gets out soon, which is Rogue, I think, yeah. Whoop -ah -ha. Then I read Reboot by Amy Tintera, and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I got it, like, as a $2.99 or $1.99 ebook sale or whatever, and I'm like, uh, I'll give it a shot. I've heard decent things about this. It was so good. Like, I was not expecting to like this, but I freaking loved it, and it didn't remind me of any books, like, I've heard of before, and it just, like, was so original, and, like, the how long you've been dead, then you wake up system cast was really cool it kind of reminded me of throne of glass just with the way that things were set up but like not at all it was just amazing and basically the longer you like it takes to, for you to re resurrect or whatever is the more stronger you are and you're like you turned into a reboot and you have to like go on these missions and stuff which is really cool and i'm really excited for um rebel which i have on my way to be right now then I read Hopeless by, uh, which was a reread for me by, uh, Colleen Hoover, and I really enjoyed this one. Obviously, it was five out of five stars. I did this because I wanted to read, uh, Losing Hope, which is in the point of the guy's perspective of the thing, and it was a really good added point to the story because I felt like the way that it was done, that Dean's side wasn't shown well, and you never really knew how he felt because it was told in Sky's point of view, and I gave them both five out of five stars. I really enjoyed them. Um, it's basically about this girl who, like, um... Her mom doesn't let her have any technology, and she meets this guy named Dean Holder, and when running and story evolves into something a lot bigger. Then I read Ripple by Mandy Hubbard, Hubbard, I don't know, um, and it's basically about this girl who's kind of like a siren who, like, has to go to the lake every night and just hope she doesn't kill someone, and, um, it's basically her story, and I really enjoyed it. It was four out of five stars for me, and I wasn't expecting to really like it because it looked very young, but it actually wasn't, and I actually enjoyed the story as a whole, and it had a very good like increasing rate build thing. 
Then I read Capturing Peace, which is the point five, so it's like the prequel to the Sharing You series. I don't know if it's going to be a series, but I know it's a book. Um, and this one got four out of five stars for me. It's by Molly McAdams, and if you know me, you know Molly McAdams, and I have this very weird thing, like, I love half of her books, but I hate the other half. And, um, this one was one that I loved, but then I got into Sharing You by Molly McAdams, which is, like, the actual first book, and I freaking hated this book. Like, it had so much cheating in it, and just, like, everything. It was completely different characters, and I was, like, looking forward to seeing the characters that you saw in the point five, but you barely saw them. So it was just very confusing so that one got three out of five stars of me which I'm bordering lying on 2.5 because literally wanted to throw this book out. Then I read Breathe With Me which is a, the, like the seventh book in the With Me in Seattle series and I've been looking forward to this book because like I wanted Mark's story so much because he's probably closest to me in age of that so I kind of like enjoyed that a little bit more and it's basically about this like series that started off like I said with like one couple getting together and then a friend gets together with someone else and then this and this and this and it just branches off in this huge series and everyone's just like a tight knit group and it's like really cute and it's just like makes you nostalgic to all the, the books you read in the past of it and this one was the seventh and this one was probably my favorite because usually those books get like three or four stars this one got a whopping five stars because it was so freaking good and it was just amazing. And I read Where I Belong by Jay Daniels. And this, I don't even remember most of this. I gave it four out of five stars, so I don't know what happened. But maybe I just read it a really long time ago and my brain is, like, fried. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Because a lot has happened, like, literally turning 18. And, like, I went on a mission thing for a week. And then, like, a lot of stuff. Like, a lot, a lot of stuff. And then moving and my brain is just fried. It's just fried. And you can look up the Goodreads if you're interested in it because the cover, the cover is pretty. Then I read My Life with the Walter Boys by Ali Novak. And this book kind of reminded me of Megan Mead's Guide to the McCowan Boys, and which is kind of true. And it just like, it was like a republished book too because it was originally written in 2007, but it came back out in like March of this year. So I was like kind of intrigued with this and it was the author's first book. So I wasn't kind of expecting it to be that good and it probably... It kind of wasn't. Um, I gave it three out of five stars. Basically, it was very predictable. It was very childish and all over. It just wasn't relatable at all. And it was hard to get into the story because you had no clue what was going on. Then I read Broken by M.L. Young and I gave it three out of five stars. This one I remember not really liking it. Just like I was really bored with the story and I didn't really relate to the characters. And overall, I just wouldn't recommend it that much. And I think it was like really cheap in the new book, so that's probably how I got it. Then I read Crash Into You by uh, Katie McGarry. And Katie McGarry is kind of like Molly McAdams in my book because we have this love-hate relationship. Because I hated Pushing the Limits. I don't understand why everyone loved it because I hated it. Then I read Dare You Too and I loved it. Like, not loved, but like liked it. And then I read Crash Into You and I like loved it. So like she's getting better. So I'm really intrigued to see what Take Me On will have to do with that. Um, but I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. It's Isaiah's story. If you read the first book, you'd know who Isaiah is. Um, and it has references to all of the people in the past and Beth and just everyone. And it's really just like an all-over good story. I liked um, the girl's point of view too because she was so like, I don't know, I guess she was like kind of like a real person. Like she had those flaws and she had problems and they weren't she wasn't like so open like to use them as like a sca scapegoat. She hid them and what a real person would do. So I really enjoyed this book and it was really great. Then I read Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. This is the not last book I read this month. It's second to last book. So that's life. Um, Maybe Someday follows this girl who um, her boyfriend and her best friend cheat on, e cheat on her with each other. And um, she moves out and moves into this guy that she had, like, been seeing playing guitar, but they've, like, been texting and talking. So she moves in with Ridge and his two other roommates. But Ridge has a girlfriend, and she kind of likes him, and he's also deaf, which, I mean, I, I don't know anything about reading people with deaf things. But the problem is he never talked, so it was always written in, like, a different kind of text when he was, like, texting or messaging or something. So it was very hard to hear his voice in the thing and relate to him and to get into his personality with the being, like, a text relationship so it gave me four out of five stars if he like would have communicated better and more relatable in a way like obviously I understand like deaf people sometimes don't want to talk but he could talk he just refused to in a way and um like I said it was very hard to follow because I feel like it was just like completely and especially when they were in his point of view it was very like 
distant and all I could hear was silence in my head. Like I didn't have like that story in my mind that made it whole and that's kind of the big <laughs> gist of it um, that gave it 4 out of 5 stars but I really enjoyed it too at the same time so that's <laughs> second to last book. I keep thinking it's last. And the last book I read this month which like barely made it by the hair of its chinny chin chin because I finished it at like 11.52 at night um, on the 31st. Um, it is Three Broken Promises by Monica Murphy and this is the third book in the one week girlfriend thing um, or one you know, one week girlfriend then second chance boyfriend and then this one Three Broken Promises and this one doesn't follow the main characters of Dean and Fable. It actually follows, no, yeah, Drew and Fable, sorry, um, but it follows her best friend uh, Jen and Colin and this is their story and it was kind of frustrating so it only got like 3.5 out of 5 stars but it translated to 4. Poetry really needs to get half stars. I'm just saying that right now because in my mind there's a big difference between 3 and 4 but like 3.5 is like in between like it's good still but it kind of annoyed the crap out of me. Um, It was very like oh I want to be with you. No I don't. Boop, 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 boop. That was fun. I, I can't believe I do this but yeah, that was my problem with it. Um, then they have Four Years Later, which is Owen's story, which is Fable's brother, and I'm really excited for that. And I'm probably going to get that as an ebook soon. So that is the end of my June and July wrap-up. Sorry, it was so long because there was a lot of books. And all the things will be linked down below. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I mean, if you're on Goodreads, they're all linked down below. So feel free to do any of that. And, uh, I don't know. Tell me your favorite book of the month that you read. And I'm just going to keep snapping. So peace out, peoples. Boop.